everyone. Welcome to the Donahue Show. We're so glad you could join us for another half hour of interesting discussion on issues that we hope you'll find interesting. Joining me today uh, are familiar faces around the, around the, uh, the ottoman, as it were, the coffee table. Uh, Cal Potter, former state senator and uh, assistant superintendent for libraries for the Department of Public Instruction. Professor Tom Paneski from the Thank University you. of Wisconsin Sheboygan, math teacher. Ken Risto, social studies person, something, something from the uh, Sheboygan Area School District, actually director of assessment and curriculum for social studies. Uh, I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a lawyer with uh, Hop Newman Humkey and happy to be here. Before we start, I just want to note the ironic change. We have Tom Paneski representing the red states and <laughs> Ken Risto representing <laughs> the blue states. And It could be north. South. It could be it north and south. south. It, it, it could because I don't think it's blue state, red state. It but could mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> but I just thought. Change of award. No, yeah, as, as we're, we're taping the north south uh, game is going on tomorrow. The yeah. North so. South basketball game. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. alumni. Okay. And so when our faithful uh, listeners are able to, to to watch this show, it'll all be history anyway. So yep. time marches on. I think there's a, some saying somewhere about that. Um, it's been an interesting time in the city of Sheboygan, uh, the city of Sheboygan Falls, uh, Sheboygan County as a whole, lots of things going on. Um, primary elections uh, were held on February 21st, I believe, if uh, my memory serves me correct. Uh, and at least in the city of Sheboygan with surprising or not surprising results, I don't know how you, how you look at it. Um, I'm thinking particularly of uh, District 4, where Dan Berg, the incumbent alder person and also county board supervisor, came in a distant, I think we could say distant second, to James Boren, a uh, political newcomer. Um, Marge Segal beat soundly uh, as the incumbent, not even advancing into the, into the general election. Jean Clayunis, a good old Sheboygan name, and uh, uh, Jean um, having a commanding lead over the second uh, person. Um, uh, James Wolfe, I believe, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, yes. and so Ms. Sigali, Sigali won't be on the city council any longer. Um, it looks like there are going to be some new faces uh, on, the, on the city council. I'm interested in your reactions to incumbents uh, falling or not doing as well. Oh, let me add in District 8, Silas Vanderweele came in a close second uh, to challenger Dustin Havens, and Jason Shane was knocked out. Um, what do you think? Former alder person well, will. Mar oh, the real story you. in the, what was it the sixth district with March or the eight uh, with March Sagali mm -hmm. or seven? Yeah, sixth was it or fifth? Fifth. Fifth district. Fifth district was not that she lost, but I was wondering who won because what you're saying, Clyunas. I th I didn't know this person. I guess it was a name associated with the Sheboygan Press before and. Was she, that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, Jean's mother uh, used to write for the press some years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I thought, well, this young woman really campaigned, and she won, and there's no story about her at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good because she's older than me, and he's yeah. the same time, so. And I thought maybe it was a young person, but no, no she's in, in her 40s or early 50s. I don't know what, how old she is, but I thought, yeah. Oh, it's young. such it's young. dangerous, <laughs> but actually you're erring on, on the good side, so. But I, but I thought that was the story, mm -hmm. and because she must have got out and really campaigned. And of course, Marge didn't help herself by saying, I don't need to go on these public forums to be interviewed. Uh, so that left all the two other people, two other candidates, to have all that free TV time. Yeah. So she stepped on her own self with Marge for the, for the, the fifth district. Jean, uh, Jean spent considerable time, uh, I guess full disclosure, I know her pretty well. Um, she spent considerable time going door to door and talking with people and refused to get into any kind of um, discussion about personalities and, and I think that helped her. And of course, I think you're absolutely right, Tom, is I think a lot of people even channel surfing and watching Channel 8 a little bit and then also reading the press and getting a sense of who's showing up for these forums. People who didn't show up for the forums were, were badly hurt. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, Berg didn't show up either, I don't believe, to no, the, to the fifth up. one. Only two of those five gentlemen, Heidemann and Boren, showed up for that one. And I know there's some folks who are really not happy about that because they wanted to have the opportunity to see what these people thought about the various issues. 
Good. Yeah, and how many were in the fourth? Like five candidates. Five running? candidates, right? And the, there were a lot of you know. Heidemann was third yeah. with 111, and then it was yeah. fourth and fifth within the. Again, Joe was the former mayor. Mayor of Sheboygan Falls. Falls. Again, in the interest of full disclosure, I know Tom, I know I know him pretty well. As, and Joe, uh, Joe's just moved into Sheboygan in the mm -hmm. last maybe six, seven, eight months. So he's a relative newcomer to Sheboygan. He really, except for, spent absolutely no money in the campaign. That happens to be my, my area of Sheboygan. There were no signs to be found anywhere with his name on him, but he did, I know he went again door to door, talked to people, as did his daughters that he, uh, he sent out there, like the Kennedy family. And, um, <laughs> the and, 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 and it showed up, it showed up for the forum and, and, and got some exposure well, that way. Yeah. Wrote a letter to the editor, you know, right about that time, but wrote, really ran kind of a very low keyed uh, campaign and did pretty well for the first showing, really did. Well, is this part of um, the last year at this time, the, the campaign slogan that I heard most often was, it's time for a change, and it certainly seemed at that point that the voters were willing to bring new people in. Is this just finishing up that process, do you think? Or were there specifics attached here that, that would lead you to think maybe, maybe not? Well, two were open seats, so you're going to get new new candidates there, uh, and no, I I don't know. I just think I think the forums uh, might people who are going to vote. There were a lot of people who didn't vote, but people who were probably going to vote tuned into the forums because they played regularly. And I mean, I tuned in just uh, uh, for a couple times just to see the faces mm -hmm. and hear what they had to say. And those are the people who probably thought, okay, I'm going to vote and uh, I'll get a chance to look and. Berg is not there, Sagali's not there, even Bonnie Sergo, I think it was uh, in one of the forums, because she, I think, said she wasn't Correct. going to attend. And These so are the, folks. So, the, uh, so though, you know, and I don't know if Silas was there or not. Uh, I yes. didn't see the, was he at the forum? I saw his forum, yes. Okay. But the Havens who beat him, he, I, I, I don't know how good an alderman he might be, but uh, he really came across as genuine and really wanting to serve the because I watched one of the forums, came across as genuine and really wanting to serve the city, and maybe that, for those people who vote, that comes across. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's a kick the bad guys out thing. I think okay. maybe it could have been a positive thing. People just looking, and these who they were, these were those, those people were, they were impressed with them. Yeah. Very little turnout, though, too. I think. Yeah, 11 percent. Can't read yeah. When you have a, an incumbent come in second, but very. Uh, close race, I think you can't read too much in when it's yeah, nine or ten right. percent of a vote. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean the 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 vote spread between Dustin Havens and Silas Vanderwilly was small. I think it was fewer than ten votes. Yeah. But you look at Boren and Berg. Boren came in at two seventy, I think, and Berg was at about one hundred eighty five. Yeah. I mean that's yeah. that's a fair well, Born amount is to a, make up. is a known commodity. I right. mean he's been advertising his <laughs> business for, yeah, that's right. for years that's right. with the picture and the whole mm -hmm. thing. So I'm, I'm familiar with the fellow and I don't wear a hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, so I think a lot of people in the community do know him yeah. and he's been involved in, in service clubs and so yeah. on. So I think this is just sort of a, a name recognition that mm -hmm. had, had been there for a long time. Yeah. Well, and, and I, you know, my own sense of it is that um, uh, the people are, that the, the campaign itself, people's behavior on the council floor or whatever may be pretty strong, but the, the campaigns themselves have been pretty low key. And really, even coming out of the primary, um, we're a couple weeks past that, maybe not a couple, close to it, uh, a couple weeks past that, and you know, still not a whole lot is going on. So I think it's gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be interesting. I know t uh, just to change pace a little bit in I th was it the only Sheboygan County Board primary, which was in Kohler? Um, Pat oh. Whedon is back on the ballot. Yeah, he uh, finished second, didn't he? He finished second behind Ken Conger, and Jeff Dickert, who is the superintendent of schools in Kohler, w was a fairly distant third. And I think Pat Whedon was somewhat behind Ken Conger, if I, if I remember correctly. But I thought that was interesting, too. You know, Pat, I think, now is 87 if I'm not mistaken, and uh, say what you will, uh, he's a person of his opinions and he works hard at it and he cares, he cares a lot and uh, uh, so it's, it's interesting to see. To repeat to the last election when Conger beat Whedon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the Plymouth mayor was 
That was an was, interesting was race. Was number two also? Yes, it was. What happened there? You, you're a little closer to Plymouth <laughs> ge geographically than the well, rest of it. Well, again, I think you can't read too much into it. It was a primary right. voter, voter turnout, but uh, I think uh, the margin of victory by the challenger was somewhat, I think, surprising. Um, but, you know, how long can a mayor stay in office without making enemies, I guess, uh, even in a place like Plymouth, which tends to be a pretty uh, even keel community with sufficient growth, not to have a lot of financial problems, but I think eventually someone who's been in office for, I don't know, it's probably 27 years, that's a long time to be mayor. And I guess you get, yeah. at some time you get open to uh, criticism and eventually mm -hmm. it sticks. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see that, that final race. And then Kylie's 87? Yes. If Is I'm, that right? If I'm not mistaken, so and of course younger I would, people coming in, sure. say, let's just yep. have, let's let's go with a new mayor, True. new young mayor. Well, and I was reading an article in the Journal Sentinel over the weekend about um, Justice Stevens, who's 85, and there's this fabulous picture of Justice Chief Justice <coughs> Roberts kind of holding him by the arm as he's going down the steps. But the import of the article is how both physically and mentally vibrant uh, Stevens remains, and so for us to have really older people involved in the electoral <coughs> process and not as jokes, I think is, is, uh, is good. Is good. Yep. So there's hope for all of us <laughs> as, as, we, as we move you along. You can run again, Cal. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I can run again? No thanks. <laughs> now you're living in the town of Sheboygan Falls. That's fair. There are always lively elections in the town of Sheboygan Falls, so I, you know. That I don't want to be that lively. <laughs> <laughs> I've never Citizen talked. Potter. <laughs> I've never uh, talked to Jim Baumgart about how much, whether he likes his county board seat and the differences between that and the, mm -hmm. and the state senate. Obviously, there are many significant ones, but uh, but that's interesting. Um, back to the city and interesting news in the city. Um, not so long ago, is it? It'll be two years this summer that Blue Harbor. Uh, was a huge political issue, whether or not to commit substantial city funds outright and uh, TIF, I believe, uh, it's a, it is a TIF, isn't it, as uh, well? Is it a TIF? I I, so. Yeah, yeah tax, tax incremental and, finance district, yeah. Um, which has some implications for the city. We don't get our tax money. Um, obviously, a big hoo-ha about the attorney fee issue you remember way back when and, oh, and all the yes. rest. Um, it's, it's certainly been in the news. Um, an oversight committee has been appointed by the mayor, uh, interestingly enough, which has not yet met or is just meeting as, as, as we're speaking uh, and whose appointments expire in April. I assume they'll be, they'll be reappointed. Should we be worried? What role should the oversight committee have? Um, is the city just purchased a huge huge white elephant. I'm trying to remember the amount of money that went into the conference center alone. I believe around $7 million, if I'm not mistaken, of, of city money. And mm -hmm. while somebody else talks smart, I'll, I'll find that exact figure. But what are your thoughts? Do we, have to, do we have to worry about this? Is this going to be just a, an enormous uh, stone around our necks? Well, or? For, you know, for two years, I've, I don't get many positives I don't hear many positives. I mean, they're just man on the street kind of comments. If, you know, restaurants are not doing that well, or something's not going so well, or construction was a little iffy here, or well, the kids enjoyed the water feature, uh, the the uh, the motel, not the motels, the um, condos, uh, limited uh, purchase, and so I hear a lot of rumor and but the, I don't hear a lot of positive stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> like hey this is a place there was a nice convention down here we went there had a good time uh, you ought to go down and, you know, I don't hear that it just sort of this, this underneath current it's a little it's not doing well uh, so I, I'm concerned yeah, mm -hmm. I think that I would be concerned I think the business uh, data that's coming out boss last year by the corporation uh, which is the sum of all their water parks and motel conference centers, I believe it was $34 million. And occupancy average, I think, was like 55%. Now, where does the Sheboygan facility fit in that average? Is it bringing down the average or is it holding up the average? And if this corporation is going to turn around, um, 
with a new corporate head, which is another signal that mm -hmm. somebody wanted, right. yeah. wanted some change. Yeah. Uh, what do they sell? Uh, do they keep Sheboygan because they have the tie to the public funds? Or do they try to say, we need to divest of Sheboygan and keep the rest? Those are types of things I think this committee really has to look at to find out exactly where Sheboygan fits in the mix of making this thing profitable. You can lose just so much money so long and then pretty soon you, uh, the books hit the fan and then uh, you have to file something in order to, mm -hmm. to pay the bills. And I think that's really what needs to be studied right about now is where does Sheboygan fit in the profitability. Yeah. And, uh, and does that appear to be on the radar screen of the advisory committee? At least, again, judging only from what's in the Sheboygan Press, and that's always a tricky business, I understand. Is they're more concerned about, it sounds as if they're more concerned about whether the convention center is making the referrals to the other community housing uh, business mm -hmm. community, you know, beds and breakfasts, and whether we're getting referrals or not. I mean, that's where the focus of the comments were in the, in the newspaper. Oh, yeah. And I found that kind of odd, given that we're looking at Again, I hear anecdotal things too, is that for the most part, the place is extremely busy on the weekends as you get oh, okay. folks up there. But on the weekdays, of course, it's really very, very quiet and can you run a business along those lines? I know some people have raved about the upscale restaurant in the facility and other people were very disappointed being there. Now, that's, that restaurant is managed differently from the, the restaurant that's the, the mainstream in the lobby type of restaurant. And, I know Jason Richardson, they just put him over there, um, and I know he'll do a good job in, in the, that restaurant. In the fancy restaurant? Or no, the, in the, the other main? one. Oh, okay. Uh, the other one is run by a, a family uh, out of Milwaukee. Right. So it's, it, which so is, it's kind of an odd arrangement that uh -huh. you've got two restaurants run by two separate entities uh -huh. in the same structure. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um, it is interesting, the composition of the advisory committee, it, there do not appear to be a lot of um, business or financial or accounting folks. Um, there are two... Um, uh, hotel industry folks. There are, uh, are a couple of older people, um, and what would be interesting to me is a sketch of the scenarios of what would happen if, if the business does go south. What would be the financial implications for the city? What would we have to do in terms of finding another buyer for the property? The conference center. I've actually been. Uh, do we with, own it? We don't. We own, own the conference center. We own the conference center, but, but we not don't the own hotel. Blue Heart, right? we don't, yeah. No, thank goodness. <laughs> so how can how can we sell? We, you know. That I'm sorry, and, and let me rephrase that: that when that it's not unusual for outfits like this to be sold one or two or three times. Um, but what is the implication? I think just for the city, because do we sell the conference center? It doesn't seem to. We don't get large conferences here. Um, as of yet, I mean, there have been one or two. I think those conference rooms are used. Um, organizations that I, you know, do some work with have, have you know, used rooms and so forth, and it's been very pleasant, and and it's a certainly a gorgeous location. But um, the financial implications for the city, I think, are are significant, and we've struggled along. Has the marina ever been profitable? I don't think so. <clears throat> and, yeah. and we've managed to subsidize that, but it's a fairly small subsidy overall. And uh, well, the biggest issue with the marina right now, I mean, we've limited it. We limited the number of slips along the way. We didn't have storage. Uh, storage is where marinas make their bucks over the winter. You have, mm -hmm. and we never had storage. It was hit or miss around the city and around the river for storage. And now they even store at the marina. Mm -hmm. If we had a big storage place, I mean, I could even see that little lot where the Blue Harbor is located, have, have a part of been storage for boats and another part, uh, but it's, that's, that's I, over the dam now, that's water over the dam, but that's where the marina makes money. I know. We turned the Triple Play Fun Center into a some marina storage, you know, over the well, winter, and that's that the triple play, you know, just up and going now. And uh, when I was talking with some folks about the about the, the Blue Harbor, was that the you know a certain element of kids, say from you know two three years old up to about twelve or thirteen, just just love the water park and they could stay there forever. Never, but yeah. at a certain point, older adolescents just that doesn't really type really appeal to them after a certain amount of time. And they're really hoping that the triple play will fill the triple play uh -huh. uh, facility will play into that, that people will be more more likely to come to the facility because that's a, you know just across sure. the way. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been so hoping they'll fill that in as well. Yeah, there's been so much criticism of just the site and the structure, and I, I mean that it was a beautiful. It was a beautiful peninsula, probably when the city was first founded. Certainly, the coal yards uh, diminished the the aesthetic value of the peninsula, and and now it's built up. And uh, I know there are differing opinions about: is it good to have this triple play fun center, and should we be trying to just have little buildings and and that sort of thing? And then you have this huge hotel. I mean, it's enormous, at least as you're looking at it. And um, so, how that whole peninsula gets used. I thought the press article just on the history of it and such of uh, this past weekend was, was interesting. Well, how is the city's PR doing to help push the Blue Harbor? I and mean, I, I think that's key. I think that's I mean, absolutely key. The fact that key. we split, uh, I'm still you know, disappointed with that, that we gave up our contract with the chamber, but mm -hmm. how are they doing? I mean, that's key. That's our major event. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, I think that clearly has to be a, a real focus for for the city um, is to bring in conventions that fill up not only Blue Harbor but also the bed and breakfasts and other motels in the area. I, I do think that's key, and I hopefully that will be a primary push of of the um, of the new um, tourist person and, and and that whole that whole outfit. We should give them a year, don't you think, Tom, to kind of try to put something together? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want it now. <laughs> but, well, it was, but it almost now better seems, than later. When, you, when you talk about the makeup of the advisory panel, it almost seems at the time there was the assumption that this thing was going to fly, was going to be, it was going to be great, and the place would be teeming with people, and the only issues are to make sure that we get our, our piece of the pie locally, that we get the referrals to the bed and breakfast and so on. Just the, the types of people that you see on the advisory panel, it now, you know, I'm, okay. it'd be interesting to see if, the, if you really want to make those same reappointments. I suppose they've never met, and you've got to give them an opportunity to meet. But I would think you have to start looking at some of the real financial issues that are going to play out if this thing doesn't play out. Um, and what is work. the accountability that's built <laughs> right. into that development agreement? Yeah. As I understand, Blue Harbor's been very good at paying its room tax. Uh, those no, room no, tax dollars good. go specifically to retire the debt uh, that mm -hmm. was extended for, um, for, for building the, 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 uh, the hotel, and, and, and those payments are not in default. So I think that's, you know, that's certainly good news. But it would be interesting just for all of us to have a good sense of it. If it does go south, where will the city be? And, um, and it's my understanding the condominiums have all been sold. There are, have they all been sold? Yeah, they're no, very, they're, they're I think very mostly by corporations uh, oh, for various okay. purposes, sundry purposes. But, but I do understand that those occupancy rates are not real good. Right. So, because you buy a three or four hundred thousand dollar condo that you can't live in more than, it's a pretty restricted period of time. And obviously you're hoping for rentals because that's how you, how you make the mortgage payment. I'm not quite sure what the mortgage payment would be on $400,000, but I, I would expect it would be a lot. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that develops over time. Um, I think the other thing, really getting back to the, the development just for one okay. second, I know there's a lot of folks who are really unhappy with you know, triple play coming up with this big yellow box and then your perspective from the west side of the river. But the whole plan is based from the perspective of sitting at the harbor and what it looks like looking west rather than looking east. And I know that the facade isn't finished out there yet either. It's not going to be yellow. I'm no. I'm told. It's, I'm told it's going to it look really fairly fairly nice. But but people need to understand is when they put those those there, it was to make people make it look nice for the people who were at the at the resort, not necessarily from those of us sitting over having a you know a cup of uh, a cup of coffee over I at the weather side. I haven't been in the Triple Play. Have you been in it? Um, I think it was just opened up this last week, and I've not been there. My oh. nephew uh, ended up playing baseball over there. He's a freshman, and he was there until about midnight for last Is Friday that, night. I'm going to have to make. And they said it was, they had a great there. they had a great great time hitting hardballs around. Well, and I'm just going to move us along because time is running out. And um, although the county board certainly cannot compete with the city council. <laughs> in terms of headlines and degree of interest and so forth. Some interesting things are going on, and one of, them, one of the, the most interesting discussions to me is, is the size of the county board and trying to cut it at, at least down somewhat. Tom, you had some interesting information that I thought was just fascinating. The well, from the Milwaukee Sentinel, uh, they, this was over uh, 3,000 counties in the country. Uh, seven counties, well, the, the top three counties in the country have uh, county boards of 51, 40, and 39. 
members. The next seven are all from the state of Wisconsin yes. at 38, 38, 38, 37, 37, 36, 36, and of course Sheboygan is 34. And then the state of Iowa, it says in the article, mandates that county board size be limited to no less than three and no more than five. <laughs> And, and it was amazing. I went to the Des Moines County, Des Moines, Iowa County. Uh, mm -hmm. I figured Des Moines, Iowa, the city of Des Moines. That's probably a decent sized county. There were three supervisors listed. That's it. <laughs> well, I think you, those are uh, Those are the extremes. extremes so w Wisconsin is by far the, the biggest in the country on county board size, well, including let me, Des Moines. Let me ask Cal this. Um, <laughs> The press article indicated that if we went from 34 to 17, the number of constituents per district would rise from 3,000 to 6,000. Mm -hmm. um, as a person who has campaigned in a fairly large area, is that increase just in the size of the district that you represent? I mean, it's more work, obviously. It's more people. Um, yeah, it does, but uh, I don't think it's unmanageable. Um, when you look at a county of 110,000 as we have today, that is not that unusual to have a base. I mean, if you take, mm -hmm. I think if you look at how you would probably draw those districts, you'd take the city of Sheboygan Falls mostly as one. That's what Falls is about 6,000, Plymouth about 7,000. You know, you could, and then take Sheboygan at low 50s. Um, you know, you could have a manageable number from each community, I think, and bunch a few towns together with the villages that are in those towns and still have a, a manageable size. You know, one of the things with the county board is most people don't, I said to say, don't know who the county board supervisor is. I, I, I doubt very much if they get a lot of phone calls. And so I, I think uh, the workload that some of those folks have, particularly many of them are retired, um, wouldn't be that unmanageable. I think mm -hmm. a, a county board in the teens whether it's 14 or 17 or whatever choice that we come up with, would be a manageable size. I know mm -hmm. that it had been previously, the, I think the last time we went through this, it was a suggestion to go to 24. But at 34 is a large number. And mm -hmm. I think anything in the 20s or in the high teens would be manageable. Mm -hmm. And Jim Baumgartens is talking about having it to 17. To 17. To 17. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some discussion about between 34 and 17, but then you have some real issues about drawing lines. And, well, and another and thing is getting the committee, districts. they say, well, the committee jurisdictions will be so large, they'll be spending a lot of time. Well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a concern, but that's how you finesse your committees. You look okay. at the workload, you look at the jurisdiction, you combine committees, and you try to do the best you can. Mm -hmm. And if you have to pay them a little more, maybe you have to give them a 10% raise or something, but you're still saving money, you're netting out, because if you're cutting your board in half, yeah. you'll still be able to uh, give them decent comp somewhat decent compensation for the extra workload. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Wisconsin well, State Senate is about that size. It's 33, and uh, right. we need to wrap yeah. up. It's been a pleasure, and remember to vote for that school logo. <laughs> Thanks, and we'll see you again.